What's up guys, I want to talk about social determinism in this video. Uh, social determinism is a word that I've come up with. I don't know if the, the name of the word has been in existence before today, but um, that's besides the point. I just wanted to talk about the term social determinism and what it means. So, social determinism is basically a construct that, or a theory that suggests that your life, the, la the events in your life um, determine your behaviour. And not only that, but it determines the outcomes of all of your actions um, but not uh, but it's mainly based on society and how you fit in into the social social structure and this depends on whichever context you're into uh, it can apply to culture it can take into consideration culture um, etc uh, like if you grow up in Nigeria um, you're you're going to behave differently to somebody that's grown up in New York so uh, that's that's a that's a perfect example of social determinism but um, what made me decide to make a video on it was um, I felt like this video or this topic was at the forefront of all of the the whole list of different topics that I could have made a video on because I felt it was the most important to talk about. Uh, I was on the train home from signing a contract at my new job and uh, I was just thinking about different actions that human beings perform and why human beings perform different actions. I'm guessing some people might say, duh, um, it's obvious why people, human beings perform different actions because um, different stimuli cause them to react to that particular stimuli. So if the stimuli is different, then the action or reaction is going to be different. And that take, that makes you think about two different things. First of all, if the reaction is... Uh, first of all, if you're talking about the um, human beings' actions actually being reactions to stimuli, external stimuli, then... Isn't it, isn't it safe to say that human beings are majority of the time, or you could arguably say um, entirely, entirely, um, or all of the time, uh, reacting to external stimuli as opposed to acting uh, out of their own volition, volition and or will? So does that mean where human beings aren't free agents, or we may be free agents psychologically, but we don't have the opportunity to act out, act out this free will or free or vol or um, we don't have uh, the ability to act out our free will based on the fact that we're always reacting to external stimuli. So that's a very uh, philo deeply philosophical question that you can ask yourself and you can analyze empirically so you can, you can make it into a scientific experiment as, experiment as well. That isn't the basis of this video. Today I just want to cover the whole theory about um, what social determinism, determinism is and why I decided to make this video. So again, I was coming home on the train. And I was thinking about all of the different actions, especially the negative actions that have been carried out in history. Take, for example, Hitler's um, Hitler's campaign, um, the, the, the vast uh, mass shootings in America. Those are just a few um, of the different negative actions that people have taken. Uh, and take the positive ones, or what we call positive, because I mean, these are connotations that are made by human beings, positive and negative. They're not necessarily objective um, or you can make an argument as to how they're objective, but that's not been done yet. So, um, or at least been been universally accepted. But anyway, besides the point, um, take take the positive actions that people have made. For example, Michael Jackson's positive influence in in music. Um, many art, many music artists, many um, artists in general that have had a positive impact on the world. Um, take um, classical music that allows people to. Um, that allows people to be at peace when they're listening to music and concentrate and have a lot of mindfulness. Take medita meditation, uh, for example, and different meditative practices. Take martial arts and different fighting styles. Take uh, defens defensive fighting, defensive um, styles that you can learn to defend yourself against any potential attacks. Many different positive, positive actions that human, human beings have taken to benefit society and the, for, uh, the generations that come after them. Um, and when you compare them to negative acts, you, you could easily say, uh, why don't human beings always perform uh, positive acts? Act? Uh, it's, uh, it's so simple, just perform positive acts, your life will be happy and everyone else's life will be happy. Well, it's not ne necessarily so simple uh, because human beings to some extent or to a large extent and based on psychological research are determined by not only their genetic code, uh, their genes derived from their ancestors, especially their parents, but they're also determined by social social um, events, whatever happens around them, because um, you're always reacting to whatever is happening to you. 
um, whatever's around you. For example, if there was no oxygen or air around me right now and there was sulfur instead, I won't be able to breathe. So I'm um, in that situ in this situation um, and I, in that hypothetical situation, I'm only reacting to what is around me. I mean, I'm, I'm only reacting to this scenario now because there's air I can actually breathe as and function properly. Um, as a, a human being so anyway besides the point i just wanted to share with you the fact uh i wanted to specify or focus on on the reason why human beings um i'm not going to say it's necessarily impossible but it's highly improbable that an action could have been different um and that is to imply that determinism is at work and um whether you should fear or feel fear or feel negative i'm not too sure i haven't come to that conclusion myself um so so what I'm going to say is that if you take if you take if you think about the different actions that people take take for example deciding to go for a jog that uh, the decision to go for a jog um, what what came before that was an option an option to either go to jog or to do something else maybe sit down and watch TV but before that came an inspiration an inspiration as to um, um, as to wanting or desiring a particular goal. Sorry, I just had a brain, brain, brain freeze. Uh, desiring a particular goal, whether it be to increase your physical fitness, whatever it may be. So thoughts, as I as I talked about in my previous video, aren't necessarily out um, of your control. You don't control the thoughts that come to your head. So these options that have been given to you in the form of thoughts allow you to choose from those options, and then um, allow you to either increase, improve your life, or uh, uh, or or make your life worse. Um, and take for example, if some if a particular person has the unfortunate unfortunate situation whereby negative thoughts are coming to their head, they can only they can only really the, the chances of them performing a negative act are higher than those that have positive thoughts that come to their head. But then again, it's not necessarily 100% in their control to uh, when it comes to the thoughts that come to, to their head. So, in that case, you can ask yourself: Well, are negative are people that perform more negative acts than positive acts? Uh, are they determined to perform more negative acts than positive acts? And if they are determined to perform more negative acts than positive acts, then why do they why do they deserve to be punished? Or why do they take, for example, people that are psych psychologically ill? Back in uh, well, we've advanced a lot in terms of our knowledge of psych of mental illnesses. But back in the day, uh, people were either good or bad. Um, so mental illnesses weren't necessarily as sophisticated uh, as known uh, as known in depth as we know them today and we can still know more but back in the day when we didn't really know what, uh, much about mental illnesses people that committed murder or committed suicide were thought of as very bad people and people that were still alive to tell the tale for example if they were murderers or if they were taking someone else's life based on a mental illness um, they might, they may have been prosecuted. They may have been uh, um, sentenced to death. They may have been sentenced to electric chair. So not a lot of understanding of the mind is at work here. As, is at work there, and what what mental forces are playing that caused that person to to perform that action. Many people would argue Hitler was mentally ill um, because to be able to perform such a such a such a psychopathic act as to kill uh, to kill millions of, of Jewish people is not necessarily a compassionate act so there must be some lack of compassion in his mind um, which is um, which could um, be the definition of a mental illness so um, that's more so uh, talking about the psychological aspects of determinism but I want to talk about the social aspects of determinism considering all of the aspects um, that contribute to your actions and your behavior and your uh, personality that I've already mentioned now, now take the aspect of the events that go around you, especially the people around you, because that is what social, uh, the, the social aspect is. It's the people that are around you. So take, for example, you grew up in a gang-infested um, area. What are the chances that you are going to become a gang member? The chances are extraordinarily high as compared to somebody that has grown up in an area with low gang activity. And that's what you see today. So how can we treat those people? Uh, uh, how can we treat each other equally or how can the justice system see everybody as equals if the chances of of um, being a criminal are incredibly high um, considering the fact for example that you're um, raised by a single mother which increases the chances that you will be a criminal by I think it's over 50% so take the, take, in, take 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 into take take into consideration the fact that you may have been raised by a single mother and your your um, you are raised in a gang infested or criminal criminally active area the chances of you committing a crime in your life is extraordinarily high so do you deserve to be prosecuted 
in the same way that or do you deserve to be prosecuted in in, in general um, as compared to somebody that's grown up in an area with the opposite of that has happened whereby there's no almost no crime um, and there's uh, it's just basically prosperity um, I, I personally think from a moral, moral standpoint it's easy to say no but of course we have to have some measures of removing people or removing negative um, activity from society be, to be able to allow human beings to prosper so it's a very very difficult question but anyway m m more based on the social aspects human beings are social creatures and you may have heard this term quite often and quite frequently but what does it mean one of the things that it means is that our brain has been has evolved and has now um, developed components whereby it relies on different social functions or different uh, reactions to social stimuli so basically some aspects of the brain are work as some are work as checklists to to identify and to ensure that certain activity uh, when it comes to to human beings outside of yourself um, are happening so take for example uh, if you are being appreciated by other people if you are being liked by other people if you are uh, being seen as a positive influence on other people those your brain your brain has in the mechanisms that that check for this very 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 thoroughly and um, what happens is if you if those if your brain is able to um, if your brain is able to determine that these 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 are uh, positive these positive things are checked off the list or that that human beings are responding to you in a positive way then what happens is you you feel healthy you, you feel an inner sense of peace or to some extent but what happens is if the opposite happens and your brain decides or determines that um, human beings around you do not do not appreciate you or do not like you or avoid you or um, respond to you in a negative manner um, what happens is every time that happens or every event that coincides with a negative uh, experience by an external human being caused by you your brain uh, can easily um, I don't want to say slowly die, but the more that this activity happens, your brain almost slowly dies because people can uh, develop forms of depression based on isolation. Because isolation is an antisocial behavior, and any antisocial behavior is any any behavior that that works against sociability, and any antisocial behavior is um, to some extent arguably the the enemy of evolution or the enemy of uh, survival of the fittest. Um, and it is survival of the fittest to some extent that is basically the best way to live um, and to be sociable is the best way to live so to be antisocial to to um, to, to have antisocial behavioral tendencies is uh, is works against you but then again people are born with antisocial tendencies for example ADHD different mental disorders so are they what what where can we draw the line in terms of judging these people i mean we seem to be coming to a more egalitarian uh, society whereby we feel like we should treat everybody equally but can we really treat everybody equally when everybody has uh, different tendencies everybody is different uh, sometimes in significant ways so this is a question that i leave you guys with um, i i i am i'm, I'm going to end this video in a kind of like a a manner whereby everybody can think about what I've said and discuss about it in the comment section and even in their own in their own time with their families and friends so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed my videos and the type of content that I put out I really do have interest in a very I wouldn't say odd but um, I would say odd in terms of um, my channel is very diverse in the topics that I discuss um, as compared to other YouTube channels but thank you for sticking by and I will see you in the next one Peace.